Hello, my name is Hope Kaya of SantaFe-WebDesign.com and this is a short video tutorial on keyword placement, optimizing a web page. This presentation presupposes that you've discovered the very best keywords for your site. If not, you can watch the free Keyword Coach video tutorial, Find the Best Keywords. Also, purchase the amazingly affordable and easy to use keyword tutorial ebook that will give you everything you need to find the best keywords and prepare them for your designer. Both are available at santafe-webdesign.com. All right, the title tag is the most important place for your keyword. And what we're going to do here is just go through all the elements on a web page that you want your keyword in. Okay, and this is the most important place. It shows up at the top of your browser window. See Santa Fe Web Design connecting you with your customers? That's my title tag. I use my web website as an example a lot because I don't want to give my clients keywords away too easily. The title tag also shows up as the link in search engines results. So if you do a search for Santa Fe Web Design, you find on page one of Google my link, and the title is Santa Fe Web Design, connecting you with your customers, and it shows up right there as a link in Google. In code, this is how the title tag looks, and this may not be terribly clear, but uh, your web designer does know what to do if you give her or him the keyword phrase that you want to use in your title tag and tell them that you want it there. It shouldn't be a problem. The keyword in this tag is Santa Fe Web Design. That's my main keyword, uh, Santa Fe Web Design. Always include a keyword in your title tag. The title tag should be no more than 60 characters, including spaces. The descriptive meta tag is a hidden piece of code that describes the page. It shows up under the link in search results. So you see under the link, Santa Fe Web Designer, Hope Ostheimer, Kaya, etc. That's my descriptive meta tag, and that's where yours will show up under your link. In code, the descriptive meta tag above looks like this. The keyword in this tag is Santa Fe Web Designer. This tag should be no more than 150 characters, including spaces. And you want to use this text to draw visitors into the site. If you have a great short testimonial that includes your keyword, this can be very appealing. Sometimes your title tag can be a question and a descriptive meta tag the answer. See here? Somebody got it together. They're a math tutor. They researched that a key phrase that people are typing in is need a math tutor. And they are using it as their title tag here. And they're using it again in their descriptive meta tag. But in this case, it's a question answer format, which is very effective. It really pulls people in. And the testimonial idea really pulls people in too. Uh, so consider both of those. They're not often used in this in this way. The keyword meta tag is a hidden piece of code that lists the keywords for a page separated by commas. Due to abuse of this tag, it's not noticed by many search engines anymore, but it doesn't hurt to, to use it, and I would recommend it, um, that you include the keywords for any given page in a keyword meta tag. In code, it would look like this. This is the keyword meta tag for my home page, which has Santa Fe Web Design, Improve Website Traffic, and different iterations of my name. You know, excuse me, on your home page, <coughs> you probably do want your name if people are going to be searching for you. So you'll have a few keywords on your home page. In general, you probably just want one as a rule per page. This tag should be no more than 150 characters, including spaces, but it's best to limit your keywords to three phrases per page, and one is even better. The header one tag is a main header for a page. It tells search engines that this is the main point. In code, an H1 tag looks like this. 
This tag should be short and it should contain the main keyword for the page. The H1 tag can be styled using CSS to avoid the clunky look that standard HTML would give it. So I've avoided that clunky look by designing a, a site with CSS where the H1 tag has a pale blue background and a border and it's all caps to give it some styling here. Alt tags. Alt tags are the alternative text that are included in the code for images as an aid for the site impaired. In code, an alt tag looks like this. The keywords in this tag are abstract acrylic artist and Nancy Rayner. Do not use these tags to stuff keywords that don't relate to the image. Give your web designer text for one alt tag for every image on the page. Keep the size down to 60 characters plus or minus. In Internet Explorer on a PC, an alt tag shows up when you roll your cursor over the image. So this is what it looks like. You've rolled your cursor over these dancers and this flag comes up, Ron Stewart and Echo Gustaf Gustafson, contemporary dancers. So this has three keywords, Ron Stewart, who's a well-known dancer, Echo Gustafson, who's a well-known dancer, and contemporary dancers. So, and it, and it makes sense, you know, it's not stuffing keywords that don't make sense. You use keywords to help, de you know, describe an image. Keywords as navigation. In many websites, the navigation looks like this, home, about, contact, blog, etc. Try using keywords in your navigation. In my case, the keyword coach blog is a keyword, right? In fact, when you have a blog, if there's any way you can use the keyword as the name of the blog, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, it, it becomes the title tag in the blog, uh, the H1 tag in the blog. So um, use keywords as the name of your blog and then link to it in your navigation system using those same keywords. When search engines see a key phrase that's popular um, being linked to a page that is optimized for that keyword, it is especially appealing to them. So whenever possible, you'll be using keywords as links, linking to pages that are optimized for those keywords. This is important. Your navigation links should be built using text, not graphic buttons. They can be styled with CSS. So in this case, I've styled the navigation links with CSS so they don't look boring, but they're text. If, if you highlight them in your browser, you'll see that they're selectable. That means search engines can read them. A lot of web designers like to use buttons. They're not as effective if they're graphically made as images. So insist on text-based navigation. Italics and bolding. When your keywords appear in text, if it looks tasteful, you can bold them or italicize them. This is just a quick example on my site. Improve your website traffic is a keyword. I bolded it. And, you know, whenever it looks okay, you can do that. I did that with SEO-friendly web design. Uh, you know, so keep that in mind when you're building your site. If possible, include a link at the bottom of a page that includes keywords and links, and also that it links to a relevant page. So in my case, there's a footer. And about Santa Fe web design is at the end of each footer navigation and it links to my about page. It's much better to say about Santa Fe web design than just about because Santa Fe web design is a good keyword. And once again, I have my business name is my keyword, which is also nice if you can do it. And uh, it's on a copyright at the end of every page, which is a good idea if you can do that. And you can do it. Apply these techniques to every page on your site and you'll be in much better shape than many of your competition. Go to santafe-webdesign.com and visit the Keyword Coach blog and buy the ebook, The Keyword Tutorial. All of these are available at santafe-webdesign.com and I would love to hear from you.